Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. After comparing it side by side with the Codex Tazir, today in this video I'm going to go over the features and specs of the Runcam Hybrid, measure its latency, and also show you how to update its firmware. Just like the Codex Tazir, the camera unit of the Runcam Hybrid features two lenses. The top one is an M10 lens, which is used for recording HD footage at a maximum resolution of 4K 30 frames per second, and the bottom one is an M8 lens, which has a lower latency and used for FPV. Just like the newer split style cameras from Runcam, the Runcam Hybrid is using a coaxial cable, and I think that this type of cable is much better than this one, since it can break easily and it's not very flexible. In addition, unlike the Codex Tazier, which is using a dual board, the Runcam Hybrid is using a single board with 20x20 20 20 mounts, so it takes less space and easier to fit on your stack. The weight of the Hybrid is 18.2 grams, so it's a little bit heavier than the Codex Tazier. The reason for the weight difference is the size of the camera unit, and as you can see, the camera unit of the Runcam Hybrid is bigger than the Tazier. It is designed to fit micro-sized camera mounts, so its width is 90 mm, its height is 24.7 mm, and the distance between the back of the camera to the front of the HD lens is 24.4 mm. As I mentioned before, the camera board is using 20x20 20 20 mm mounts, and its outer dimensions are 29x29x3.8 mm. Controlling the hybrid is done using these two buttons. Short pressing this one is going to either start or stop the recording, and while the camera is recording, it's going to be indicated by this flashing icon on your FV feed, and also by a flashing blue LED on the camera board. Long pressing the same button is going to turn off the HD camera, and you're going to see an indication on your FV feed that the camera was turned off. And if you're going to long press it again, it's going to turn on the HD camera, and by default, the hybrid is set to start recording when the camera is turned on. The second button allows you to switch between the recording mode and the QR scanning mode. Just like the Runcam 5, the hybrid does not feature a Wi-Fi module, and in order to set it up, you will need to use Runcam's dedicated app and scan a barcode that is going to be generated by the app. The app is available both for iOS and Android. First, you need to install and open the app, select Runcam Hybrid, hit QR code configuration, and over here, using these two tabs, you can configure the camera. So let's say, for example, right now we want to set the camera to record at 1080p 60 frames per second. Let's select this option. Then we need to hit apply. And as you can see, a QR code is going to be generated. And before that, you have to make sure that an SD card is going to be inserted into the micro SD card slot. Otherwise, the settings are not going to be saved. And now we need to scan this code. So first we need to enter the QR code mode, again by long pressing this button. Now over here you can see that it's written QR mode and the LED is now solid green. Now we need to scan the code. And once the barcode was successfully scanned, it's going to show over here HD preview and the LED on the camera board is going to turn solid blue. On the hybrid board, except the two configuration buttons, you can also find a micro SD card slot that supports up to 128GB micro SD cards. On its other end, you can find the connector of the camera unit, the video out, ground, and VCC pads. This connector is already pre-soldered to the board, and the walking voltage of the Runcam hybrid is between 5 to 20 volts. You should note that Runcam advise you not to power this board directly using 4S LiPo batteries and above. In addition, next to the VCC, ground and video out pads, you can find RX and TX pads, which are used for controlling the recording of the camera using bit of light. So you can define an auxiliary switch and then assign it to either start or stop the recording procedure. In addition, next to the camera connector, you can find another TX and RX pads, which are used for updating the camera using the SpeedDB app, and also for setting up the FED camera, either by using an OSD control board which is not provided along with the camera, or by using UART control. In order to switch between the UART control and joystick control options, you'll need to power the camera, 
while shorting the TX and RX pads. By default, the hybrid is set to joystick control. And now I'm going to power the camera while shorting the TX and RX pads. And as you can see, it changed to your old control. Now after setting up the camera back to joystick control mode, I soldered this OSD control board to the TX and RX pads. The ground is soldered to the TX and the signal is soldered to the RX. Now we can access the configuration menu by short pressing the OSD control board. And over here, as you can see, there are not many options. First of all, you can adjust the picture and then you can choose whether to flip the image. So you can flip it horizontally, vertically and both. In addition, you can also adjust the brightness, contrast, sharpness, hue and color gain. You can also adjust the language, so you can choose between these options. And finally, you can perform a camera reset. After pressing exit, it's going to prompt you whether you want to save the settings or not. Another menu can be accessed by holding the joystick to the top position. And under this menu, you can configure the pilot name, which is by default hidden and set to run cam. In addition, you can also turn on and off the sharp view, select between 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratios, and set the picture format either to NTSC or PAL. By the way, all the settings that I just showed you are the default options. If you'd like, you can also configure the same settings using the UART control mode. So first of all, you will need to short the RX and TX pads in order to enter the UART control option, then solder the RX to TX and TX to RX, free UART pads on your flight controller. And then you need to head over to the port section on Betaflight and next to the UART port that you chose to use, select under peripherals, camera, run comp control. And if you'd like to know more about this feature and see how to control the camera settings using your remote controller, you can watch my review of the Runcom Micro Swift 3 where I show how it's done. Now I'm going to show you how to update the firmware of the FB camera, a very interesting feature that was first introduced on the Runcom Racer. In order to update the firmware of the hybrid, you will need to first of all set it to UART mode by shorting the TX and RX pads which are located over here. Next, you need to solder these pads to a free UART port on your flight controller. So the TX is going to be soldered to the RX and the RX is going to be soldered to a TX pad on your flight controller. Then connect the flight controller to Betaflight, head over to the port section and select under peripherals next to the UART port that you chose to use, camera run cam protocol. Hit save and reboot. And now we are going to use the SpeedyB app in order to update the firmware of the camera. The Speedy app is a very useful app, so in case you don't already have it, I highly recommend to download it. And basically this app is going to enable you to configure a flight controller on the go. And if you have Android device, you can simply use an OTG connector. And if you don't, you can buy this adapter and then it's going to be compatible with iOS as well. So first we need to plug in the OTG cable. And by the way, you also have to make sure that the flight controller powers the camera. And I did try to update the camera firmware by powering up using an external battery and it didn't work. And I've spent actually a lot of time figuring it out. So again, the camera must be powered up by the flat controller. Now we need to open the SpeedyB app and select on the left side, camera firmware update. Over here, you can select the camera type that you're going to update and we are going to select Runcam Hybrid. Now we need to select the camera firmware and by default it is set to Racing 1 and if you'd like you can set it to Freestyle or to Swift Style. Let's select Freestyle, hit Download Firmware and you also need to power the flight controller. Now over here you can choose between Bluetooth connection and USB connections and I did try to update the camera using the Bluetooth connection without any success. So you're probably going to need to use the OTG cable. I'm going to choose USB connection. Select this device, which is connected to the flight controller. And now you need to choose the serial port that you configured before to be set to run com control option. And in this example, I chose UART 6. Hit OK. And as you can see, now the camera is being updated. If everything goes well, that's what you're going to see. 
And in order to complete the update, you need to repower the camera and the flight controller. So let's disconnect the battery, disconnect the OTG cable, power it up. Again, connect the OTG cable. And now I'm going to show you what happens if you are having issues. If you don't manage to successfully flash a new firmware, what you'll need to do is to select recovery mode. So now I'm going to select the Swift style option, select recovery mode, hit download firmware. Again, select the USB connection that I chose before. Select the UART port. And now it's going to ask me to disconnect the camera and plug it again. So I'm going to unplug the camera, plug it back. And now as you can see, the firmware is being flashed again. So again, if you're having issues with the previous option that I showed you before, you should use the recovery option. The next thing that I've done is to test the latency of both hybrid and tertiary FEB cameras. In order to do that, I filmed the light in my room at 240 frames per second, which means that every frame represents about 4 milliseconds. As you can see, right now we can still see the light on the FMB screen due to the latency, and the first camera that I tested was the Runcam Hybrid. It took about 5 frames for the screen to go completely dark, so I can estimate that the latency of the Hybrid is about 20 milliseconds. I repeated the same test for the Cadex Tazir camera and it took for the Tazir about 10 frames for the screen to go completely dark so I can estimate that the latency is about 40 milliseconds and I need to emphasize that this is not a 100% accurate test but it can still give us a pretty good estimation of the latency. So that's going to be it for my review of the Runcam Hybrid and hopefully I'll be able to get another camera and then compare the different firmware options. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.